It's the Go Gopher Podcast with Mike Grimm, episode number 111. I am Mike Grimm, voice of the Golden Gophers, and welcome back to the podcast. This week, it's a true pleasure to welcome back to our podcast, Gophers senior forward Parker Fox from Matamidi. He was a guest last year in one of my favorite podcasts we've ever done. He returns this week, just a few days after taking part in Senior Day. We'll talk about that, as well as going into detail about this year's Golden Gophers, what their goals are the rest of the way, and what's been working to get them to where they are now. Parker Fox, as good as it gets, he'll be my guest on episode 111. Our Go Gopher podcast is presented by alumni-owned Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. If you're a business founder planning to exit your business, start by contacting Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. Sunbelt serves more businesses up to $5 million in revenue than anyone, and True North M&A serves companies with revenues up to $150 million. You can get a confidential, no-cost, no-obligation business valuation started today. Make the most of your life's work. Here's what you do. Visit sunbeltminnesota.com or tnma.com today. Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union is also one of our big sponsors here of the Go Gopher podcast. Life math is complicated, and Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union makes it easier with local financial experts available to help in person or virtually. Learn more at affinityplus.org slash go gophers. Affinity Plus also sponsors our player profile segment, supporting student athletes like Parker Fox, who will get a Visa gift card from Affinity Plus for his appearance on this week's episode. Thank you to Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union for supporting Golden Gopher student athletes. We're podcasting episode 111 from the Aquarius Home Services Studio. We invite you to subscribe to the Go Gopher podcast. It's free to do so, and you can always go back and listen to previous Go Gopher podcast. Last week, for example, we talked Gopher women's basketball with the voice of the Gophers, Justin Gard, and also asked the voice of the Iowa Hawkeye women's basketball team, Rob Brooks, a longtime friend, what it's been like calling every single one of Caitlin Clark's games. And with the Big Ten tourney in Minneapolis this week, you should go back and listen and get primed for this sold-out event at the Target Center. This week's episode, we're talking Gopher men's basketball with the great Parker Fox. He joins me next. I'm Clay Geary, walk-on, turn scholarship, wide receiver for Gopher football. And I'm Ben Utech, U of M alumni, Super Bowl champion, and Tony Dungy Uncommon Award winner. We understand championship culture, which is why we're part of the True North family of companies. True North invests in only elite teams, like the champion team at Sunbelt Business Advisors, Minnesota's largest seller of companies. To learn more about True North and our diverse family of independently owned companies, visit truenorthequitypartners.com. Episode 111, Golden Gopher Senior Forward Parker Fox is a return guest. It was a little over a year ago you were on our Go Gopher podcast, and at that time we were talking about injury recovery. And now all these months later we're talking about a season that you have really enjoyed, I think. Yeah, no, certainly. I think uh, it seems like just kind of yesterday I was, you know, doing yeah. doing the episode with you, and uh, you know, we were talking about the year ahead, and um, I'm excited to kind of recap that year. Yeah, it was episode. I looked it up. It was episode 55. We're at 111 now, wow. so like almost at half. There you go. Right about the halfway point to where we're at at this point. It was the last week of January, so I guess 13 months ago. Um, I want to ask you about all that you've been through, but immediately I want to ask you about Senior Day. It, it yeah. was a little quirk in the Gopher schedule. I've never seen this before, where yeah. Senior Day wasn't the last day. As we talk, it's Tuesday afternoon. You guys will be hosting. Uh, Indiana tomorrow night in the final home game of the season. That normally is a traditional senior night. You yes. guys did it on the weekend. I think that helped more families and parents get to it. It's not an 8 o'clock Wednesday night game. So I thought that was kind of cool because now you kind of have a double. You got your last home game now mm-hmm. and you had your senior day on Saturday. So how was senior day? Well, you know, ironically, you know, that kind of, I didn't really even know a senior day until like the day before. <laughs> so I texted my mom and dad and I was like, Hey, we're all senior day, by the way. And, they're like, and I was like, what did you find something to wear? Did this and that? Like, where do we go? She looked we? great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it. So, um, no, it was, it was funny because I, I really didn't even like, you know, I wasn't even prepared, but I think, you know, with the Wednesday game being eight o'clock and being a weekday, it's like, you know, why not make it a weekend? I think people were appreciative too, because we got to do some things after and, um, just kind of hang out as a group. So 
that was fun. But um, as a whole, I think it was, I mean, I don't think you could have scripted a better better senior day um, uh, if you take out the first half, that's yeah. for sure. But yeah. um, I think just, you know, the way we came back in the second half is this kind of a testament to who we are as a team and, um, you know, what we want to do, the kind of edge we want to play with. And um, that was us. And then, um, you know, personally for myself, you know, I thought it was pretty cool that, you know, coach took a time out and subbed me out and I was able to, um, you know, get some love for my guys and um, kind of hear, you know, Williams Arena. Yeah. Um, I think it was the biggest crowd of the year, too. I think there was about 12,000 in there. So uh, just kind of hear them give give me that energy. I think, you know, I, if you know how I play, I, I'm trying to give the energy to the crowd and it's cool to have them, you know, give that back to me. And um it was a pretty special moment. And then, you know, obviously you get to speak and there's so many people I wanted to thank and, and so many people that I wanted to, you know, you know, name drop, but, um, I'm an emotional guy and it, you know, those emotions got the best of me, but, um, just was super excited uh, and super grateful to have my teammates and my family up there and, um, get to share that moment with them. Yeah. And you, you, you mentioned you got a little emotional there, but with the journey you've been through, I think totally understandable because you had a lot of people that helped yeah. support you through mm-hmm. what were two pretty tough years years right in terms of basketball yeah I mean there's just so many people like I you know I wanted to name drop whether it was you know trainers or uh, strength and conditioning or just you know support staff or coaches any anybody that was you know stuck by my side there's, there's just too many names you know yeah. but um, at the end of the day I was super grateful that everybody got to be there and uh, my parents were there and, and some members of our community were at the game as well and um, just just kind of soaking in that moment and, and enjoying it was uh, was special for me. And then for you personally, have such a major impact on the yeah. outcome and the rally. I, I mean, that had to be uh, satisfying also. Yeah, you know, I think anytime you're you're able to play well, it, it you know it kind of adds that cherry on top of a, of a senior day. You know, and getting the start and that kind of stuff was it was was pretty cool. Um, if you would have told me I could start for the Golden Gophers a couple of years ago, I would have said you know give me that. But um, uh, yeah, just you know playing a playing a good game, just trying to bring energy, um, doing what I do. And um, fortunately, it worked out that game. So. Yeah, senior day, too. Uh, it hasn't been as much lately with teams in terms of it used to be if you were a senior, you'd get the start and you'd play a minute or mm-hmm. two. If, if you weren't a contributor, you, of course, it, it isn't that big of a deal in the sense that you have played a lot of minutes yeah. anyway. But I was um, surprised, I guess, a little bit that you mentioned in the in the uh, in your postgame interview with the uh, with the media that um, before you allowed coach Johnson to go through with it you wanted to check with Pharrell mm-hmm. first talk, talk me through that conversation yeah you know I think um you know maybe it wasn't even a conversation I needed to have because Pharrell's gonna you know be okay with it regardless probably but I think it was just for me um just to show Pharrell that hey we need you here today uh, we need you every game um and that this whatever this is if, if it's something that you're not you're not all right with then um it's not a big enough thing for me to you know have to have this start it, does, it doesn't matter to me enough for for you not to be able to show up and, and be yourself so I uh, just wanted to make sure that he was aware that um you know I, I was showing him love and that that I was showing him that hey we need you man because you're an integral part of this team and what we do and whether it's starting or coming off the bench we need you a big time so I uh, just kind of want to make him aware of that and uh, I think he you know knowing Pharrell he handled it great and was able to um, you know kind of ensure that in me like hey man go at it this is your day so yeah, yeah. and he had a good game too he did yeah. he did and he does all the time so <laughs> and he's a guy that we need so yeah. no doubt, no he's, doubt. A, he's, he's definitely a good player no, no question um, what was it like um, to hear your name in the starting lineup yeah I mean it was pretty cool um, I think um, you know, you, you don't really think about that as, as a player. You think, you know, how can I go out there and contribute and all that kind of stuff. But then when you think back on the game, you're like, hey, I just started for the Golden Gophers, you know, a Power 5 game against in, in front of 12,000 people. It's like that's not a lot of people get to, you know, experience that. And I think, um, you know, I kind of maybe didn't understand as much in the moment, but thinking back, it's like, that's something I'll never be able to take away away, away from myself. So I'm, I'm very grateful. Yeah. So you guys get down 23 in that yeah. game. It was, and I'll be honest, it was pretty flat, right? At yeah. the start of that game for whatever reason. Um, and you're down 23, cut it to 17, and they bang two threes to go back up 23. And I'm like, oh, man, this this might not be the senior day we're looking for here. And then I thought you had um, the pogo stick block shot where you spiked it like a volleyball player. Then it bounced <laughs> up, and you were you were able not only to to, uh, to spike it into the into the deck, but then you were able to – you, like, looked around, surprised that no one else was there. You grabbed it. Um, that funneled it. And then I thought your teammate Mike Mitchell was deflecting it seemingly for, like, six or eight yeah, possessions in a row, deflecting 
passing and stealing. And all of a sudden, you got a little momentum. You went from 23 down, uh, finished on a 12-1 run. Mm-hmm. Um, still down 12 at half, but that's doable now, yeah. right? 12 is doable. So what was what was the thinking? One, how cool was that? With the, I, I was joking today. We did the Ben Johnson show, and I was trying to describe it, and Gerdsy was making fun of me. And I'm like, <laughs> you jumped up, and there was like a levitation there. Like, you stayed. You, like, were waiting for him to shoot. You're just hanging out for yeah. a minute, you know, while you're moving toward him, and then you blocked it. Um, and I know you get a kick out of that. And you've timed, you've had some timely blocks, not just, like, good-looking blocks, uh-huh. but in important pieces of the yeah. game. And I thought that block maybe switched the whole tenor of the game. Well, yeah, I didn't even realize how I kind of elevated until Jackson Purcell, after the game, he was, like, just showing me the video. He's like, dude, you literally, like, fly, like, we're flying. Yeah. Like, you were, you know, you didn't, like, you didn't go down. You just stayed in the air. And I was like, yeah, it kind of was crazy. <laughs> um, but, no, I think, yeah, that was a big-time block. But I think uh, in the media timeout, um, I said to the guys, I said, if we can get it to 12 at halftime, that's where we want to be. Um, we didn't have a kill, so we call a kill when you get three stops in a row. We didn't have a kill going into that time, uh, that last media timeout, which is the four and under media timeout. Uh, so we talked about if we can get a kill, and then if we can get it to 12 before the halftime, we, you know, we'll like where we're at. So um, I think we just had that kind of Demeter coming out of that, that timeout. And then obviously a 12-1 run, I didn't know it was exactly that, but obviously it was to go down 12. So, um, yeah, just kind of flipping the switch, flipping our mindset. And um, I think we're able to hit a couple shots, get a couple steals. Mike was in passing lanes. I got a couple blocks. Uh, we just kind of we, we wrapped it up a little bit. And yeah. uh, we needed to go into the halftime because going to the half down 20 is is a lot more daunting than going to the half out down 12. So uh, and then we got in the halftime and, you know, I was the last one to the, the locker room. And I told the guys, I said, we're going to win this game. You know, like I, I truly believed it. And everybody in the locker room believed it. And uh, a coach came in and was like, you know, this is this has got to be something where you're fighting for a win. But you're also fighting for you know the seniors and, and making their senior night special, and then we were able to go and do that in the second half. Yeah, and they were hitting everything. Right? Oh my goodness! And, yeah. and tip your cap to them. They're not a great shooting team. They're not terrible. Yeah. I mean, they have guys that can hit it, but they were you know, uh, I mean, at some point you had to just be thinking, what in the? I mean, yeah. what in the world? Yeah. Right? No, and, no, no. And I I don't play the four a lot, but when I do, I have to take the ball out of bounds. And yeah. I swear, every time I was taking the ball out of bounds, it was just a three after three after three, and I was like, there's no way they can sustain this. Like this is this is crazy. So. Um, um, you know, it's 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 deflating too because you know you got the biggest crowd you've had and your energy was great pregame and you know you want to come kind of out and put on a show for the people but um, nobody left which was which was good <laughs> you know I think yeah. maybe because it was at two o'clock that helps too but uh, nobody left people stuck around and then they were able to see us you know uh, flip it flip the switch a little bit and come into form in the second half yeah and I thought it was uh, you know a good team effort you look at the box score and there was a lot of guys that did a lot of stuff and you know Dawson was doing his thing and yeah. I thought Cam. You know, he hit the go-ahead shot. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you guys had an early lead, like two nothing or whatever it was, and then didn't lead again until whatever fifty-seven, fifty-six, yeah. or fifty-eight, whatever it was in there. Cam drove in, got it. You had a one-point lead, and a possession or two later, he hits the three. I mean, that's yeah. an NBA-looking shot. I mean, that guys in the NBA yeah. take that shot. Guys in college don't always yeah. take that shot. No, he's now not. you're up four. Yeah. I mean, what a player. I mean, he's an NBA-looking player. You know, I think um, I tell him it all the time. I, I knew from the moment he stepped on campus when I saw him work out for the first time. And it wasn't even the, you know, the making of the shots. It's just how he approached, you know, his workout. And he knew it. Obviously, you know, his brother's playing for the Lakers. And, um, you know, he's got good trainers and that kind of stuff. But, like, the way he approached his workout, it was no nonsense. It was get in, you know, get my work in, get my game-like shots in. And, and the reason why he hits those is because he does them in practice and he does them when he works out all the time. So it's no surprise, um, you know, when the lights get a little brighter, I think he even starts to make them a little bit more. So um, he's a, yeah, he's a heck of a player. Um, you know, I'm. I'm hoping to um, see him in a gopher uniform for another year, yeah. but you know I wouldn't I wouldn't blame him if that that NBA money starts calling. So yeah. we'll so we'll, we'll see what he does, but I know eventually he's gonna he's gonna play in that league one day. That's for sure. Yeah, let's hope that it, it, one more. I think he could. I think he'd do well to be one more year yeah. at least here. In We'd the like Twin to see that in, we? in maroon and gold. Um, I remember early in the season he I think he was recovering. He was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. He was yeah. recovering from mono, and yeah. that was tough because he was you know away from home for the first time and mm-hmm. feeling not very good and couldn't be around people for a minute, you know, all that stuff. So, um, yet he was, you know, he stuck to it. And then once he got going, I remember talking to Dawson at some point, um, and this was prior to the Missouri game. And okay. he's like, this guy's hitting, you know, he, he's winning scrimmages, you know, mm-hmm. and you guys play these situations. Yeah. And he's the guy hitting. And so I remember when Ben called his number late in that Missouri game and he missed both shots. Mm-hmm. And I, there were some people like, oh, man, what, what, what you know, what, yeah. what are we going to a freshman for yeah. here? And um, and then Ben said, you know, hey, look, 
he's been hitting these shots. Dawson had told me that before that, so I even mentioned it on the air. Like, look, yeah. there's a reason this is. And now we're all looking back saying, well, of course <laughs> you're going to try to get Cam one of those shots, right? He just, on that particular night, didn't happen to get it to go. No, you're exactly right. And I think Cam kind of established himself as that big-time shot-making guy early, um, whether it was you know practice situations or whether it was kind of open runs or whatever it may be. He was, he was a guy that always wanted the ball in his hands. And I think... Um, as a coach, you'd be dumb to to go to a guy that doesn't want the ball in his hands, and, and Cam's Cam's a guy that does. So um, smart to go to him, but um, you know sometimes they fall, and that's yeah. that's the name of the game. So, but you gotta you gotta continue to. I think which is you know awesome of Ben is he continues to you know instill his trust in guys, and um, Cam has kind of you know made that uh, kind of deposited yeah. that check a little bit. So and and the moment he's not scared of the moment. The moment's not too big. He fits. Yeah. He fits in Certainly. as a freshman. He's freshman of the week this week as we record. Yep. in the Big Ten for his two games last week. Um, thinking back to that Missouri game, that too seems like it was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but think about how uh, you guys as a group have morphed and transitioned and turned into just a different looking team. I mean, you were up 21 that night. I mean, mm-hmm. kind of the reverse of what happened this past Saturday. Yeah. So we saw, like in that night, we saw glimpses of what Cam could be, glimpses of what Hawkins could be. And then Dawson got hurt, and then other guys had a chance, I thought, in that stretch, including yeah. yourself. Okay, yeah. I'm going to get some more minutes and yeah. create a little identity. Dawson comes back. You guys figure it all out in terms of how it goes. And playing pretty good ball. I mean, I think outside of the Nebraska game, this is like 10 or 11 straight games where one, you could have won any of them. Yeah. And the good news is you won most of them. Yeah, no, that's ironic because we were talking about that today in the the film room um just kind of as a team before coach came in we were looking at our schedule and we're like you take away that nebraska game over the last month there wasn't a game where we didn't feel like we could win you know you know obviously the ball is going to bounce different ways and it's hard to win on the road and you know you go into places that um you know it's just it's just difficult to to go in there and get a win i think pinnacle bank arena is one of those places where it's you know they've won however many straight there it's a it's a tough place to get a win, but um, you know I think just with the way we're playing and kind of how we've shifted and shaped over the year, um, the year it's uh, you know we've done a lot of different things, whether it's you know playing different guys or you know different lineups or different guys together. But I think you know over this last stretch. Um, probably 12 games you know we've yeah. kind of found our identity of what we want to do defensively how we want to run our offense and kind of, the kind of guys we want to have in the game at, at certain times and um, I think with with the way we've done that I just I truly feel that there's you know a lot a lot of teams that uh, we can't be you know even going to Purdue and then playing them tight yep. and not a lot of people go in there and play very well and and we were leading for a lot of that game you know obviously you know they're they're a monster with you know what the guys they got they got and they, they pulled away at the end but we, we truly feel that you know with what we got we can we can beat anybody and um, we have to keep that kind of mindset because I think uh, if you watch us you can kind of see that and believe it yeah for sure and I'm going to ask about that mindset as it moves forward because you've got games in between now and then but um, I want to ask you down the road here about the yeah. target center and having that tournament yeah, be fun. here in in the home city but um, we, we I mentioned we talked with Ben today on the coaches show and he talked about uh, the energy that you provide off the bench and how um, you know it basically it has given um, him more liberty to play you more minutes because mm-hmm. you're just given so much and doing so many things that impact the game. He also guards. He asked him and he mentioned about what it takes for you to get ready. <laughs> and he's like, sometimes in coach, you know how he can be. He's like, uh, sometimes it's painful just to watch him try to get ready for the game. So I don't know what that entails. Cause you're probably downstairs in the training yeah. room. So what, what does it take for Parker Fox now, you know, double knee injury, yeah. two years removed from that, uh, to, to get ready for a big 10 basketball game. Uh, you know, I was just telling coach Thorson at practice today. I was like, when I was a freshman, I was just dunking everything in practice <laughs> and warm ups, And then the older guys would be like, Oh, just wait till you're our age and wait till your knees hurt and you won't want to dunk anymore. And, yeah. That, and, and, right. People age of 22, right? <laughs> now I'm in that position a little bit. But um, no, I think, um, you know, I think I'm a kind of guy that um, feeds off of, you know, the crowd and the energy. And um, that's why I love to play at the barn. That's why I love to play at home. Obviously, I love to play in general, but um, it's even more special when I get to, you know, play at home in front of my friends and family. And, um, you know, pregame for me is, is, a, is a little long. It's a little grueling, um, but definitely just getting in there, getting my body warm, you know, hop in the hot tub for a little bit and uh, kind of get my body loose. We got, you know, the ultrasound machines uh, on my knees and um, taping the ankles. And then um, just, just a lot of, just a lot of soft 
tissue stuff, um, you know, especially with the, the knees kind of, you know, the cartilage in my knees is not as what it used to be. So yeah. just kind of getting them warmed up and loose. And then, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think when I get to run up there for the, you know, the last time we run up the tunnel, it's like, you feel that energy kind of bouncing back and, um, you know, kind of stinks sometimes to go sit on the bench and get a little stiff, but like, you know, I'm just, I'm just fired up and ready to go anyway. So that, that energy fires me up and then, um, you know, maybe a couple other different painkillers yeah. that they give me, but yeah. <laughs> we won't comment on those right here. So <laughs> just to make sure that there's a little bit of numbness and in, in give myself that edge, yeah, right? Yeah. No doubt is, um, and then when the game's over, um, Oof. is it, are you sore? Oh yeah. Oh, knees yeah. mostly. Yeah. I th- yeah. I mean, it's mostly the knees, but I think it's, it's, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. You don't play for two years, you know, you, your hips aren't moving, you know, the same way yeah. they move. The ankles aren't moving the same way. Your shoulders, you know, not shooting the way it's been the last two years, but, um, Sometimes I have a little, little trouble sleeping at night, but um, you know, most of the times we're, we're pretty light the next day, which is which is good for myself. Um, some of the other younger guys, maybe they you know get in and, and play a little up and down, but I, I opt out of that the next day, that's yeah. for sure. But um, uh, yeah, it's you know it comes with the territory. I think you know for a guy like me, I I know what it's going to be like, so you know you're kind of signing yourself up for it. But um, it's been. Um, it's been a learning process too with myself with, you know, just listening to my body and see how I'm feeling. And if I can, you know, whatever I can do the next day, whether it's recovery or, um, if I'm able to kind of just be more a detailed day where I got to lock in on the, the scout and the, the kind of stuff we're focusing on. But, uh, it's been, a, it's been a learning process. That's for sure. And how, what's your comfort level now? playing compared to maybe in that Missouri game or early in the year when first time you're in a game mm-hmm. in a couple years. Oh, is night it, and day. Is yeah, it? yeah, night and day. Yeah, I think um, you know, you don't, I think, it, and it's more of just like not playing for, you know, 900 and whatever yeah. days it was for right. myself. And, you know, the last game I played at Northern, I was a sweet 16 game and I had you know I think it was like 36 points and 16 rebounds I just had like an awesome game and you know you you want to get right back to that but it's like you have to slow yourself down and yeah. realize like hey this might take a little bit of time and that's something that me and Ben talked about too where it was like hey you know we want to watch your minutes we want to watch how your body's reacting you know the day after a game the week after a game you know see how how you're feeling because this wasn't a this wasn't just a little like you know tweak in my knee yeah. like I had major reconstructive knee surgery in both my knees that where the doctors told me I might not ever be able to, you know, run again or play again. And the fact that I'm, you know, able to do these kind of things like, Hey, let's take a step back and make sure we're, you know, I want to be able to go play with my kids in the yard one day yeah, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And, um, but I think the, our whole staff, whether it's, you know, trainer Ryan Dotson or coach or, you know, Dr. Nelson or whoever it may be, they've done an awesome job just working with me and making sure that I realized that, you know, I want to give everything I have right now, but also I got a, a longer life to live too. Yeah. So, um, maintaining that. And like you said, yeah, I think, you know, the early kind of games of not playing too much. And then I think I played 30 minutes last game. So it's like, you know, now I'm, I'm feeling better and better. And yeah. it's like, Hey, I want to ramp this. I don't want to come out of games anymore. Yeah. You know, earlier it was like, damn, my knee hurts. My, yeah. You know, my knees hurt. I need to get some ice on these things. But now it's like, dude, keep me in the game. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking and rolling. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling like I'm 19 again. So. Did the, has the game slowed? Did it feel fast when you first got back? Um, I don't know about fast just cause I've played so many years yeah. of, you know, college basketball already, but I think it was more of just like, you know, just feeling that my body's different. You know, I wasn't able to just go up and top, touch the top of the backboard and sprint down and get a dunk and then get a block. And it's like, I have to, you know, get my body kind of acclimated yeah. and used to that. But, you know, I think now I'm at a point where, you know, the, the tournament's right around the corner here where it's like, I'm feeling like myself again. And I'm, I'm really feeling, you know, quite good. And I think you're kind of able to see that too out on the court, whether it's, you know, dunks or blocks or yeah. diving on loose balls. Like, you know, I think if you watch me now, you would say this guy looks like he's, you know, back in pretty good form so. yeah absolutely no doubt and it looks to me too like there's been a couple of times where you've you've just decided you got the pass you're on the wing and you're just gonna drive it yeah. and say let's see where it takes it yeah. sometimes it's a dunk yeah. and sometimes it's a pass yeah one time it would be a charge you know? but, 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 <laughs> but at least you're comfortable <laughs> yes. to say Let, we're gonna we're gonna do this yeah and that's the mental side of it you know and I think that's something that you know I talk on my podcast you know about as well yeah. um, but it's like you know having that not being afraid of that kind of failure and you know putting it in the hands of the work that you've done you know I, I grinded rehab for 30 months you know so it wasn't it wasn't like um, 
you know, I wasn't preparing myself for these situations. You know, it was everything I was doing was preparing myself to, to do that, you know, to drive in the lane and, and make a play and go dunk on somebody or make a pass or whatever it may be. Like I was preparing myself for so long to do that. So, you know, why not do it? You know, when you were on episode 55, you talked about how it how much it meant to you. You came here to play at the barn like yeah. Williams Arena was what you wanted to to you wanted to play on that mm-hmm. floor. Yeah. Um, so now you have uh, for the whole season. Has it has it reached the expectation that you had before you got to play? Oh, and a hundred times over. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, no doubt. Um, I never got to play on Williams before in my life. I never um, never went to state. Never went to the state tournament, um, which was, you know, first round always held at Williams. I never um, played at team camp there. Um, I don't know. If, I, the only time I was ever on the court was when I was a court kid sweeping the court. So I don't think I ever even had a basketball on the court with me. Um, so, yeah, it's been it's been a uh, it's been awesome. I think just in general of the Big Ten of, you know, going to different places and seeing these arenas and seeing how crazy it is. Like it's it's really unlike anything else. You know, I think um, maybe there's a couple other conferences out there like it, you know, at the power major, you know, high, you know, power five level, but, um, coming from division two or, you know, I'm going to basically high school gyms in yeah. Crookston, Minnesota in front of, you know, 30 people versus, <laughs> you know, going into Mac arena at Purdue in front of, you know, 16,000 and, and trying to make a free throw is a, is a different beast. But, yeah. um, um, the, the barn has been such a special place my whole life. And, um, the fact that I get to go out there and, um, I'll even look at pictures of myself after the game where it's like, I got Minnesota on my chest. Like yeah. that's such a cool deal. Pretty so sweet. yeah, you um, how how often would you go to games? I mean, now you're a basketball junkie. Mm-hmm. Were you a basketball junkie from the time? You oh were yeah, my and my dad put a basketball in my crib when I was little. Yeah. We had the little Tykes hoop. Um, he had me in a. There was no basketball league for pre K and for kindergartners, but he you know created a league and and, and put me in it. And uh, <laughs> it, it was basketball, basketball, basketball. I, I actually loved hockey growing up too. I never got to play organized hockey, but we always had this saying in our family: it was hockey bad, basketball good. And yeah. I had to like repeat it back to my dad because he did. Not while we played hockey. On skates, yeah. <laughs> I was like, let me skate, Dad. Like come on. on yeah, skates, I'd be like right? Char out there, yeah. no doubt. But yeah. um, I always loved, you know, being in Minnesota. You grew up kind of, you know, enjoying that hockey culture. And um, I loved it. My brother loved it. I remember we would get like uh, sticks and like hockey sets when we were young. But my dad's like, all right, we'll get you this. But you're a basketball you're player. Basketball. You're going to be a basketball player. And, and I'm grateful for it because I fell in love with it. Um, and, you know, whether it was at my high school game, there's, you know, I would be rubbing the guys back, you know, and they're checking out a game or giving them water and it's just like this kid's probably annoying but it's yeah. like I, I just loved it and I fell in love with it and and then you know fell in love with gopher hoops at a young age with guys like Trevor and Bachway and you know Rodney Williams and you know Tollickson and, and all those yeah. kind of guys it's like you know you, you grew up watching them and you just wanted to go to games and you know a lot of times we'd have my own tournaments so we couldn't you know go but like anytime we got a chance to get down to Williams Arena we did it and um, I'm definitely grateful because you know you 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 remember those memories sitting in the crowd with your dad or your mom mom or your brother and it's like now you see those kids that are sitting in the you know crowd and it's like I think I have a different appreciation for it because I got I, I would remember I remember when I was in their shoes yeah. and it's like you know you, you show those kids like hey dude like you can do this too anything's possible and um I think that's what makes it so special for me as yeah, well. Yeah, man, that's that's awesome. And then growing up watching the Gophers, as you mentioned, you watch yeah. the Gophers then on TV. Oh, yeah. And they're playing at Mackey. They're playing at the Breslin Center. Mm-hmm. They're playing at Michigan. And now yeah. you're on those courts this year. Yeah. What's that? No, I think that's even, you know, one of the cooler things, too, where it's like, you know, I get to shake Tom Izzo's hand after I just, you know, played at the yeah. Breslin Center against him. Like, this is only something that's like, it seems like a fantasy kind of, because it's like, <laughs> it's only something you got to see on TV, right? It's like, yeah. this isn't a real place. They don't, they don't get there an hour early and organize all their chants and this and that. And it's like, and then, you, you know, you go and live in it. And, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, when you get out, there, it's funny because like people ask me, it's like, oh, is it intimidating? And I was like, you know, yeah, if you look, if you look at it from a standpoint of like, hey, this is pretty crazy yeah it's intimidating but you get it out there on the court and it's like you're just playing another game yeah. you know you're just playing another basketball game and uh, I think that's because I played a lot of games in my career as well but also it's like um, you know kind of enjoying that and soaking it in and realizing like hey these people want you to lose but like you got a chance to go out there and, and prove them wrong and, and to kind of you know give them a little you know push back so yeah. uh, it's been yeah it's been pretty magical and um, I'm excited that the Big Ten tournaments here at the Target Center because um, I've never played the Target Center either so this will be one of my oh, one of my yeah. first my first time doing that Good so opportunity there yeah no doubt actually I lied I lied 
third grade youth basketball. Pre- we did one of those yeah. pregame yeah. deals. So it's been however many years, it's whatever that. Ago. Yeah, whatever that You're may be. Now. I'm 25. Yeah. I'm 25. So it's probably been 15 years now. <laughs> so that's yeah, that's a lot. They probably made some rentals in there at yeah. the Target Center. Yeah, I know you've been there for Wolves games as well. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about that. Let me talk real quickly about our sponsor, Affinity Plus. They're your local credit union, proudly serving Minnesota since 1930. If you're a current Gopher student or a proud Gopher alum, you're eligible to join this financial that wants to build a meaningful banking relationship and put you first. You could meet with a local employee at any of their branches statewide, including right off campus in Minneapolis. And to learn more or find other ways to connect, go to affinityplus.org slash go gophers. That's affinityplus.org slash go gophers. They have an award-winning mobile app. You can download that. Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. We thank them for their sponsorship. And because they support Gopher student athletes as well, they have given Parker Fox a Visa gift card for his appearance here. So we thank them for that. Thank you, Affinity Enjoy. Boss. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, all right, so we talked about Cam Christie and hoping he's back next year. Uh, you went through with Senior Day, <laughs> and you don't have to answer. You can answer however you want. You do have one year, if it's my understanding, believe it or not, you could be back crazy. as a 26-year-old yeah. uh, college player. So what What in your mind, where, where are you at now mentally? What do you think? Well, you know, you can give the cliche, I'm in the moment. No, I'm enjoying the moment. I'm focused on the next game, focused against Indiana, and that's all true. You know, I am, and it's. Uh, I think it's important for for kind of me to be where my feet are and um, enjoy that, but also know that um, you know there is a kind of next step for me. So it's definitely always in the back of my mind. Uh, I, I don't have an answer yet. Um, I wish I did. I wish there was a you know a, yeah. you know wish there was a way you could just look over your life and it'd be like, hey, pick this. But but that's life, right? You got to make a decision and you know live with whatever consequences you decide to live with. And um, um, I'm, I'm definitely excited for whatever it may be. Uh, I, I know I'm going to be pursuing basketball, whether that's you know a, a professional career and you know I think my whole life I've dreamt of being an NBA player and um, I would be selling myself short if I didn't you know try to pursue that dream whether that's next year or the year after but um, I know that um, if I were to decide to come back to college it it would be here at the U and um, it would be to be a gopher because there's nowhere else I'd rather be and um, it's not only to to play but to be in front of my family and friends and and my girlfriend being here at at the U um, being here in Minnesota and and my brother and and my family it's like it's a special it's a special place for me Um, but I don't have a you know a definite answer Answer yet, and and I, and I might not have one for for a little while, but um, I know that um, I got a tough decision to make, and I know that there's a lot of people that that want to see me back and um, want to see me in the maroon and gold, and and I'm super grateful for that, and it, it truly does mean a lot. But um, we'll kind of see where where my life takes me. I think it's uh, being patient and just trusting that that it'll all work out. Could some of your decision be made on how the rest of this year plays out? Yeah, certainly. I think, um, you know, I believe that this team is pretty special. And I think if you look at our, our roster, everybody that you know, plays meaningful minutes has a has a chance to come back next year, and um, I think it would be um, it would be pretty special if we were able to you know keep something like that. And um, you know, obviously now nowadays it's it's a different beast with the transfer portal and nil and all that kind of stuff. But I think if we were able to you know keep our core and um, you know come back for another year, we we would be a pretty special team. You know, obviously we're kind of on the fringe of you know maybe kind of getting a, uh, a bid in the tournament. Probably probably not unless we you know prove kind of ourselves the next couple of weeks here, but um, it would definitely be something that, that would affect um, how it's finished. And and also to, to tell you the truth, if you were to ask me, you know, eight months ago, I would say there's no way I'm coming back for an eighth year. My body's shot, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm tired, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of school. And now it's like, as this has played out, you know, it's like, I'm enjoying it and I'm loving it. And it's like, this is, this is why I do it because I live it and I love it and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So um, it's definitely a tough decision, but, um, but we'll see what, we'll see yeah. what it has in store for myself. I don't want to, I don't want to close any, any you know any yeah, doors I think right. it would be dumb for me to close a door and and you know shut it and lock it and not you know think of what could be behind it right and of course I mean as you mentioned with injuries and everything else if you're going to pursue there there's probably a, a ticking uh, you, yeah, know, certainly, you know there's certainly. a limited a number of earning years yes. so to speak yeah. whether it's NBA or whether it's you yeah. know G League or Europe or yeah, wherever it certainly. is there's a you know so at some point you have to decide you know where that is as well so uh, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of considerations but but uh, it's so cool to hear how much fun you're having. Um, you mentioned your brother. Um, 
leading scorer, right? And yeah. whatever the Wisconsin league is called. What's yeah. that called? Wack the WIAC. Yeah, WIAC. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He averaged, he averaged like 26 yeah, a night. Yeah. He um, puts and as he, he's entered the portal. He has. Yeah. Yeah. He's entered the portal right he's got now. One year. One year eligibility. Yep. The Division One portal doesn't open up until March 18th. So um, Division One guys can't go in yet. But um, he's the Division Three guy. So he could go in early. Um, and he's hearing from, you know, a bunch of Division Ones and, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm kind of helping him kind of go through that process and decide and, you know, what he wants to do, whether it's, you know, finding a spot where, you know, he could say he was a high major basketball player or whether it's, you know, picking a spot where they're going to be able to play him a bunch of minutes and he's going to be able to, you know, have a career in this. So uh, the transfer portal is a beast. It's, 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 it's hard to navigate. I uh, hope nobody does it alone. I hope you have somebody that's uh, giving you good advice. But um, I think we got a pretty good support system around him and he's going to be able to make a decision that's best for him. He's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, Kind of six, a six. swing guy, wing yeah, guy. Yeah, slashing, slashing yeah. wing. Yeah, yeah. Can, can really jump and um, kind of has got that, that fox athleticism. Yeah, so. he can yeah. jump to it. I remember <laughs> last year when you were on, you said you would watch him on your laptop or yep. on TV. All Is that still how you're yeah. trying to catch most yeah, of his games? Yeah, you can stream those games, and I, I would always stream them. I think um, I went to a couple of them this year, and we had off nights, and um, it's just so fun to, to see how he's grown. And um, I feel like it was just yesterday we were – beating the hell out of each other in the backyard yeah. and trying to play one-on-one and all that kind of stuff. And, and to now see us, um, you know, with what – what we've made of our careers is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, and he had seventy right in a game. He did have seventy. He had a seventy last point year. game last year. Yeah. What's his high this year? Do we know? <sighs> yeah. Probably probably around it's like one of those forty guys. You yeah. know, not a seventy again though. That not would have been that seventy been was crazy. crazy. And I forget, did you you were watching that game? Yeah, me and it was me and um, me Isaiah uh, Train Thompson and then Jamison Battle. We were all watching in my room and. I remember we turned it on at halftime, and it was like, Brody Fox has 32. And I was like, 32 and a half. Let's see what he ends with here. And I think he ended up having like 60 with like two minutes to go and ended up getting 10 before the, the final buzzer Man. sounded. And there was like one at the buzzer to get it to 70. And I was like, goodness gracious, that's a, <laughs> crazy. That's one you'll never forget, right? Crazy. So were your parents good athletes too? Yeah, yeah. My mom was uh, a very high-level uh, speed skater, uh, okay. was on the, the national speed skating team, you know, competed for a chance to go to the Olympics a couple times, uh, fell short. Short, but you know, was yeah. was able to be in those moments, and then uh, my dad grew up loving basketball, football, um, got me into all the sports, uh, whether it was that kind of stuff or, or fishing and, and skiing, and you know, whatever it was, we were always outside yeah. and, and doing that kind of stuff. And then my dad was, um, I mean, geez, he, he he did it all. He coached he coached my basketball team, my football team, my soccer team. I would I remember there would be nights where like the seasons overlapped, and it was like basketball practice at three, football's at five, and soccer's at eight. And he was the coach <laughs> for all of them, and he had oh, a man. he had a script and a, and plan a practice for all plan for all of them and um he loved it he lived it and i think um you know for me and my brother too and um i don't i wouldn't change it and i wouldn't want it either way because yeah. it was it was i think those are the most special moments and that's what you know made our bond so strong and you guys um, will be talking about it from, from you yeah. know with, with your kids yeah you know? no doubt about it hey, and i'll probably do the same yeah, for my kids exactly. right no, no doubt. doubt no doubt all right so you mentioned um that you uh want to play in the nba someday so i assume you're watching the wolves are they your team of course yeah, yeah. What do you course. think of the Wolves? Grew up a Wolves guy. I mean, I love the Wolves. I think um, I if you if you knew um, kind of my I'm, I'm an NBA guy. Um, I'm not really a college basketball guy, which is weird. Like being yeah. in it, like I really only watch the Big Ten. I could have I have no idea what's going on yeah. uh, elsewhere. Uh, I'm an NBA guy. Uh, we got five TVs in our living room, and I'm, I'm <laughs> always yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'll show you a picture, but um, I'm always glued to League Pass. I got the you know the the premium where you can put three games on, and there's usually a game on ESPN, and then you got one of the Big Ten games on the other TV. Yeah. So it's like I'm always glued to it. The Wolves are my team, and and it's been a fun year watching them, and I think we have a legitimate chance. We got a superstar in Anthony Edwards. We got um, just a talented duo with Cat and Rudy down low, and then guys like Jaden McDaniels and Mike Conley. You know, rounding out that lineup is you know it's a it's a special lineup. And um, I've kind of I've went through the dog days of the Timberwolves with Rubios and Lexi Schveds and the Kevin Love <laughs> days. And you know, I grew up a big KG fan, so yeah. uh, I've kind of you know had a little success, a little taste of it with him. And but now it's like it's fun. I think we're first the West again after OKC lost last night so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a race to the finish here yeah. so hopefully we and can they stay strong noise. I yeah. think they could I yeah. think they could and Target Center has been awesome this year um Two years ago, I went to over 30 Timberwolves games uh, just because it timed out perfectly with yeah. their schedule. I've probably only been to six or seven this year, uh, so still a decent amount. But um, it's been it's been a different energy in there, and I think uh, Minnesota is just craving a championship. And I think uh, 
it's a good chance that we could maybe see one this yeah. year. So and so outside of third grade, Parker Fox, you've <laughs> never you've been to a lot of games there, but never played there. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'll transition that discussion into how excited you are. I know you got Indiana tomorrow as we tape, and yeah. Northwestern on Saturday. Um, and look, man, you win those two games, there's a chance you could be the three seed. In yeah, this it's thing. crazy. It's be a double by yeah, a four crazy. seed. Yeah. Um, you know, because there's such that jumble. They're on the flip side, you could be, I think, as low as a ten if it doesn't go your way. Mm-hmm. So a lot at stake. So yeah. I'm not trying to have everyone look ahead. <laughs> that said, you grew up in the Twin Cities. You're a Wolves fan. Uh, Target Center is hosting this thing. Um, opportunity here, unlike most Big Ten teams have. Yeah. I mean, this is four minutes from here. Yeah. I wonder, we're taping, I wonder you know? if they're going to put us up in a hotel, if we're going to yeah. sleep in our own bed. So we'll, we'll find out. I'm sure they'll get us in a hotel. But, but either way, that's got to be, you've got to be looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be special, I think. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I, you know, love being here at Minnesota is because I get to play in front of my mom and my dad and, you know, my, my grandparents and family and friends every single day. Um, and that'll, you know, turn over into the, the Big Ten tournament. I think they're already sold it out or something like that as well. So I'll have to be scrapping for my teammates <laughs> tickets. But um, I think it's it's just a kind of it kind of shows you, um, you know, this is, you know, like we said, I have the extra year, but this would be a you know pretty cool way to finish it out, too, where it's, you know, I'm playing in front of my my family and friends and um, playing at the Target Center, you know, growing up, going to Timberwolves games, um, going to Lynx games and, and, and enjoying my time in the, t- uh, you know, the Target Center. And um, like I said, I haven't played there in years, so it'll be it'll be fun. Hopefully the ball goes in the hoop. So. Yeah. And look, this is a chance where, um, you know, a team can have on a Thursday or Friday and this doesn't happen. I've been to 18 straight, big, well, 17 straight Big Ten tournaments wow. now. And the Thursday and Friday games, sometimes there's a crowd, sometimes yep. there's not. Yep. This is a chance. You guys are probably going to play Thursday or Friday, hopefully hopefully just Friday. You get the yep. double by. But either way, yep. it's a chance on those Thursday, Friday, if it's like Williams Arena, you got, you know, 11,000, 12,000 yeah. the other night. If those people show up on Thursday or Friday, that's unlike anything we've really seen on a Thursday, oh, yeah. Friday in the Big Ten tournament. All of a sudden, you can get to the weekend. Mm-hmm. And oh. then, then it's anybody's then game. Then it's anybody. You're right. And I think I mean, we need them, too. You know, we want them. We need them. Um, I think it would be, you know, pretty special if people decided to come out and support us. Um, you know, we've, I think, you know, slowly this year, we've just had more and more people at games and, you know, people are buying into what we're doing. Yeah. And the most was, you know, at the Penn State game. So I'm hoping, you know, it's that same way for Indiana tomorrow. And then we're able to kind of turn around and uh, people just take that extra drive across the across the river and, and, and come yeah. down to downtown Minneapolis at the Target Center and, and check us out and, you know, cheer loud. And hopefully we're able to kind of give that energy back to them and we can play into the weekend, which yeah. would be, um, I think it would set ourselves up for, for what we want to do as, as a program. Yeah, you get into the weekend and then then it's anybody's ball game. Uh, you have your own podcast. Tell us about that. Yeah, the Double Down podcast. I mentioned it earlier. Um, you can check it out on all platforms. Uh, uh, just double down podcast, Apple, Spotify, um, started it, you know, when I was going through the injuries, just talking about mental health and, um, kind of the, the physical, but more, more the mental side of, of athletes recoveries and whether it's an injury, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, I had Katie brought, uh, Katie B from the, the women's team who had, um, uh, the, the brain deal and, uh, whatever it may be, um, you know, whether it's some sort of adversity or, you know, whatever you go through, it's uh, kind of that mental fight through that and that battle. And um, I've kind of put it on a little halt because of the season, but I'm excited to get it back up and going here this summer and uh, hopefully have a lot of basketball names, but also a lot of other sports as well. It's been uh, it's been a cool process. Double down. Double down. All right. Yep, there you and go. You've also created or the, the Gopher Sports marketing folks have created your of a four part it's out. Yeah. You, know, you talk yeah. with other athletes. Yep. Yep. I had the, um, gosh, I had a couple of the hockey guys. I had hockey girls. I had the two of the women's basketball players, um, so kind of bounced around different, uh, different programs here at the U and was able to kind of talk to them about their seasons and, you know, them as individuals. And I think that, you know, program is actually still going with the different hosts. Now they yeah. wanted to flip it around and make sure everybody's, you know, getting in there and, and trying out the different skills, but, um, you know, podcasting and this kind of broadcast casting lice is, is is new to me but I've, I've really enjoyed it and I've kind of found a, a passion for it which has been really fun yeah man it's uh, we'll, we'll track it out and then you were on or I don't know if you were the host you were on with uh, our guy dragon Kessich too, yes, right the yes kicker? yeah he's one of yeah, our favorites yeah he's the best and, yeah. I, and I see him all the time and every time we see each other we have some sort of laugh or yeah. you know share some sort of now, he's a bucks guy he is which is you know he was the bucks actually practiced our facility a couple weeks ago and he was standing out the back trying to get a picture with Ian. <laughs> 
Giannis, and I think Giannis <laughs> told him no, and he was pretty right? he was pretty mad about that one. So I had to rub it in his face a little yeah. bit. But um, maybe we'll see those guys in the championship. I would Who take knows? that. Who knows? You take that. Yeah, right? I would take that every day of the week. Yeah, and then we can we can do some trash talk with me and him back and forth. No doubt. Right. All right. Last uh, two quick ones. I've already kept you a little longer, and no, I promise. Good. But you're awesome. So um, this uh, game Wednesday, last home game of the year, Indiana. Like we said, it seems like two years ago. Yeah. The first time, January 12th was when you guys played out there. Um, and at that point, the Gophers were three and one in the mm-hmm. Big Ten, and then they jumped you early. I think it was 25 to seven or something. Yeah, you cut did. it to five, and then they pretty much kept you at arm length. But yeah. the team has changed so much since then. It seems yeah. like a, that's why it seems so long ago. I think. Yeah, and Ben talked about it today after practice. He said we're we're a completely different team since then. He he said they haven't faced um, the real Gophers yet. You know, and that's kind of cliche, but it's like it's true. You know, yeah. it's like they haven't faced what we are now. And um, you get fired up for a team like Indiana. You know, historic program, historic coach and Mike Woodson. They got some high level NBA talent and they got some good players. Um, but they have to come into our building and face us and, and that's the way we want to think about it. And um, we're hoping people come out. I know it's a late one on Wednesday night and might have to stay up till past bedtime, but um, maybe you can uh, you know ride in a little sick in yeah. the morning to work and then come out and you support yes. us. So we, we need it. Get in price is just twenty two bucks and those seats are good by the way. Those are those end zone uppers where you have a great great view. view. Yeah. And I'm telling you when those seats start getting filled in it creates it's a different sounding it building it you know? does. so let's get those seats uh well pick out whatever seat you want but if you want to get in those are the cheap seats and they're good seats they're not cheap seats any 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 good any seat in williams arena it i really feel like is. is a good seat it i really think it's is. a special arena to play in uh what 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 about indiana what can you remember about them and what will a key be for you guys yeah they got i mean like i said they have nba level talent they got a big guy in kalal Ware who's you know a seven footer who you know dunks everything they have a five-star freshman and Baco who uh uh, can really shoot. I think he had his career high last game. Um, they have a good player, Malik Renu, at the four position, uh, lefty. Um, they got you know a, a deep bench. Uh, they do a lot of really good things. But we d- we just want to come out with our edge. You know that kind of coach always talks about the the mindset we had at Illinois, the way we kind of yeah. came out and weren't afraid and just were able to play free and um, just having that edge. Um, we feel like if we have that and and we play uh, with an edge and we play confident and we play tough and we you know get it inside to, to Dawson and Pharrell and then spray it out to, to you know Elijah, Cam, and Mike, and you know whoever make, else check into the game. We, we we put ourselves in a good position to win basketball games. So uh, we're definitely just going to have to play the best of our ability, play hard, and, and make sure we have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, and I mean, key last couple of games here, as we said, there's such that jumble. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of wins. Up you go, right? No doubt, and yeah. that's the goal, right? That's what we've uh, that's what we set out to do. And I think, um, you know, whether it's this year, whether it's next year, or whatever it may be, we w- we're just trying to really set this program up for success. And I think, um, you know, if you've been watching, whoever may be watching, I think um, you got to love where where go for basketball is headed because, um, you know, I know, I know, I. I'm loving it, and I'll definitely be a gopher for life, and uh, I'm just excited to see this program grow. It's been fun watching, man. Thank you, Graham. Appreciate it. All right, there he is, Parker Fox. It's episode 111. My thanks to gopher energizer bunny Parker Fox for being my guest on this week's Go Gopher podcast. I hope you enjoyed hearing from him as much as I enjoyed chatting with him. Always great to have Parker on the Go Gopher podcast. Episode 111 was presented by Sunbelt Business Advisors and True North Mergers and Acquisitions. If you're buying or selling a business, visit sunbeltminnesota.com or tnma.com. We're also partnered with Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union, a locally member-owned full-service financial invested in you. You can learn more at affinityplus.org slash gogophers, affinityplus.org slash gogophers. Again, I'd invite you to listen to past podcasts, and right now, please click the subscribe button to the Go Gopher podcast. It's free to subscribe and free to listen at any time. And please share the link to the podcast with others, so they can subscribe and listen as well. We'll talk again next week.